Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're going to show you how to wire up your Acro system. So we've utilized lightweight applications like the corrugated tubing here, which works out great for this system. It's nice and aesthetically pleasing. We've also incorporated the PCB micro limit switches, which are also hidden with slot covers. And all this wiring goes back to the black box motion control system, which is a powerhouse amongst controllers in its class. And I can't wait to show you what it can do. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this first step, we're gonna go ahead and gather our wire. What we have here is four conductor wire times three. We have two at seven feet and one at 13 feet. Along with that, we'll have our flathead screwdriver. And basically what we're gonna be doing on this step is just connecting our wires to our motor extension connectors. So each one of your motors is gonna have two connectors attached to it. We're simply going to correspond the colors to the motor and we'll move along each axis as we go. So first let's start with our 13 foot cable. And what I wanna do is go ahead and turn our attention to the right side of the machine. So this is gonna be our Y2 motor. So the right side of the machine is where we're gonna go ahead and hook up this 13 foot cable. So let's go ahead and turn our attention there. So over here on the right side of the machine, if you were to face the back, we're at the back of the machine here, this is the Y2 motor. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our connection system here. And the connector that's coming off of the motor here, you'll see we have a set pin connectors here. We need to loosen each one of these to where the metal insert is facing the bottom of the plastic housing. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of these. You can see I have mine pre-loosened, so you see the metal insert here at the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and correspond our colored wires to the motor wires here attached to the NEMA 17. So let's go ahead and take our 13 foot cable here and working right to left here, if you're facing the connector with the pins up, you'll see that I'm gonna insert red to the right, blue next to red, green next to blue, and yellow next to green. So we're gonna insert all these wires and then tighten down your pin connectors here on top of the wire. Okay, so once you have the wires inserted, just give those a tug, make sure that they're tightened down properly, and that looks good. So another thing to pay attention to is these connectors, they come right off, so it's just part of the extension system. What I like to do is just keep the connectors attached, because it's just easy to correspond the wires to the proper coil pairs. So we have red, blue, green, and yellow. Red, blue, green, and yellow, that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to our next motor. So what we have here is just two of our seven foot cables left over. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the X axis motor. So we don't have a Z axis on the Acro system. The X motor is going to run back and forth on our system. So we're gonna go ahead and attach one of our seven foot cables here to the X axis motor. Once again, just like we did the Y2 motor, we're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of these pens first so we can fully accept the wire. And taking our seven foot cable here, we just wanna go ahead and match up the colors to what we have here on the motor. So you can see that my metal inserts are at the bottom of the plastic housing, that's exactly what we want. And once again, working our way from right to left here, red, blue, green, and yellow. So make sure those are fully inserted and you can see that they do correspond here. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and tighten these down. Okay, give those a tug and that looks good. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the Y-axis motor, which is going to be on the left side of the machine. So here on the left side of the machine, if you're to face the back of the machine, this is all being done while we're facing the back of the machine. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our seven foot cable here to our Y-axis motor. So if you're to face the back on the left side, this is our Y-axis motor. So let's go ahead and loosen our pins once again, and then we're gonna go ahead and connect our seven foot cable. And once again, just like we did the others, we're working our way from right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow. All right, give those a tug, make sure that your wires are tightened down correctly. And that looks great. So now that we've completed the connection system here to our wires, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our micro limit switches for the system. So we need to go ahead and gather these parts we have our micro limit switch kits times two. We also have our three conductor wire, one being at seven feet and another at 13 feet. Of course, I have my tooling here as well, my ball drivers and a flathead screwdriver. So what I've done here is I have one micro limit switch already assembled, which is very easy to do. 
you simply just put in your self-threading screws here. These are M3 and you're basically sandwiching the plate on top of the nylon spacer in between for support here. You're going to run your screw through with your spacer attached to the opposite end and then your drop in T-nut. So that one's already assembled and that's what it should look like. And then I have one over here broken out. So these are all the parts you'll see inside the kit and these male connectors already come attached to the micro limit switches for your convenience. So we're just going to pull those and put them off to the side for now because those are going to be connecting to our three conductor wires. So let's go ahead and turn our attention here to this micro limit switch. So here at the bottom end, you'll see the micro limit switches attached here. You have your solder joints on the back end for your connector as well as the micro limit switch. So what we're going to go ahead and do is take our additional plate here for the micro limit switch, making sure that you have your indications here of your ground, your signal, and your positive connection um, facing the upright direction. That way you can identify where you need to connect your wires for your convenience there as well. So taking the plate, you're going to align it here towards the bottom of the connector. You'll see that the holes align here with the micro limit switch. And then you're going to take those two M3 screws here and we're going to run it through the top end of the plate and fasten those into place. Okay, and that should be the end result there. A nice uniform looking micro limit switch. And uh, for additional information on these micro limit switches, you can always visit the Open Builds parts store. So these plates are PCB, which is circuit board material here. And it really turned out nice for these micro limit switches. You can also configure these in different uh, different orientations, which is really nice. So you can run your screw through this side, depending on how you want your micro limit switch to interact with your system or the opposite side. So for this one in particular, we're going to run our screw through this side. because so we want our micro limit switch to be oriented like so. And this will be interacting with our X axis. So let's go ahead and put our nylon spacer between these two plates for support. So that's a quarter inch nylon spacer here, you'll see. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in between. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and take my screw here, which is the largest screw you'll receive with your kit. And I'm going to run that through the nylon spacer. Sometimes you just need to reposition that spacer so you can get the screw through, just like so. And on the back end, we're going to add our additional spacer here, which is the black wide spacer. From there, we're going to go ahead and add the drop-in T-nut. What I like to do is just thread this into place because it keeps everything intact. Okay, so from there, let's go ahead and turn our attention to our three conductor wire and our connectors. So what we need to do is make sure that we align our wires properly to these micro limit switches. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the male to the female here, just like so. And you'll see your indications here for signal, positive, and ground. So what we need is blue, red, and black. So when you come over here to the three conductor wire, you'll see you have those exact colors. So you have blue, red, and black. So we're working our way from right to left once again here on the micro uh, limit switches. So like we did with the four conductor wire, we need to loosen these pins first. I can't stress that enough. There's been multiple times where if you insert the wire into the connector, sometimes it'll actually sit in there even though it's not actually clamped down. And from there, you're wondering why the system isn't working. It's because there is no connection. So it's very important just loosen these screws. So that's where you should see those inserts here at the bottom of the housing. That looks good. So as far as the three conductor wire goes, black's going to be on the left, red in the middle, blue on the right. And that's with the pins facing upright. And let's go ahead and clamp those down. As you can see, one of my wires didn't make it all the way in. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this right pin here. And this can happen, so just make sure you uh, give those a tug once you insert the wires. That way you are 100% positive that those are clamped in to the connector. Alright, so I'm going to give those a tug, and that feels pretty good. So I'm going to set this one to the side, and let's move on to our 13-foot cable here. So same process, blue on the right of the connector, red in the middle, black on the left. And that's with the pins facing upright. So once again, I'm going to loosen these. Okay, giving those a tug, and those are fully inserted. So now let's go ahead and turn our attention back to our micro limit switches. So once again, I had one built up for you, and you can see that the orientation here is a little bit different. So this one's for the y-axis. So the reason that it is situated like it is here is so it'll interact with my y-axis gantry plate. So 
That's the reason I have the screw running through this side with the solder joints. So just make sure that you do orient one of the micro limit switches like you see here. So let's go ahead and pay attention to the front of the machine. So right now I'm facing the front of my machine and we're gonna go ahead and install our X-axis micro limit switch. So facing the front of the machine, if you don't have the machine towards the front, it's really easy just to rotate this machine. It's very lightweight. So we're gonna go ahead and move over to the left side of the machine if you're gonna face the front. So let's go ahead and turn our attention towards the 20 by 40 here on the front face. Okay, so taking our micro limit switch here, we're gonna go ahead and bring it over to this top track of the 20 by 40. And once again, make sure you have the right micro limit switch here. You'll see that the screw heads are facing the front instead of the solder joints. So this is going to interact with our X-axis gantry plate. So taking your ball driver here, all you have to do is slide your drop and T-nut into the track. And as far as position goes, your travel's maxed out once your plate runs into this side. So before it does, I like to just kind of position it next to the black angle corner connector. That way we don't have to worry about the gantry plate cracking on the side of the machine or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. Sometimes you gotta work with that drop in Tina to get it to sit right. All right, just make sure it's nice and tight. Don't over tighten it. Once again, this is a PCB, so it's circuit board material. You can crack it if you uh, put a little too much strength into that turn. So just be careful there. And uh, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and take my 13 foot cable here. Since this is the X axis, we need to go ahead and use the longer length because it has a longer run here for the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my male connector here and attach it to the micro limit switch. You'll see that blue is on the right side, red is in the middle, and then black over here is to the left side. So that's very important. Just make sure that you have those correct. And I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this uh, additional wire towards the back of the machine. On future steps, we're gonna be labeling these wires, so don't concern yourself with the mess right now. It's all gonna be organized shortly. So now let's go ahead and move back to the micro limit switch for our Y axis. Okay, so for our Y axis micro limit switch, we need to go ahead and pay attention to the right side of the machine if you were to face the front. This micro limit switch is going to be interacting with the Y axis gantry plate. So we have two, remember we have a Y axis, we have a Y2. So Cartesian style, one gantry. So what we have here is our solder joints facing the front. So just make sure you have the right micro limit switch here. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and position that on the right side. So let's go ahead and turn our attention over here to the right side of the machine. So here on the right side of the machine, as you can see, what I'm looking for here is a position to where my wire can run underneath. So the way that we have it positioned currently, the solder joints, it's actually not gonna work out. I mean, you can do it that way. So let's say you wanna run it into the bottom track here, the 20 by 40, you have that option. So if you prefer your wire to run on the top, that's completely up to you. What we're gonna do is just switch that. So it's real simple, just take off that drop in T-nut here. And I'm gonna pop my screw back out, run it through the opposite side, add the spacer and thread the drop in T-nut back on. And it's that easy. So we're gonna go ahead and take our ball driver and making sure that our micro limit switch is in front of this 20 by 20 here at the bottom of the 20 by 40, because that way our gantry plate's not gonna run into this before it hits our micro limit switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and position that slightly in front. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and tighten that into place. Okay, so our plunger is active here, and this will interact with our gantry plate. So what we're looking for is that interaction here. So if I bring my gantry forward, you'll see that we have interaction here, which is precisely what we want. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and take our three conductor wire and attach that to our micro limit switch. Once again, just make sure you have the blue wire on the right, red in the middle, black on the left. So you'll see here, mine do correspond with the micro limit switch. So that looks good. Okay, so now that we have our micro limit switches in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and attach our laser to the Acro system. I chose the laser because I really like the design work that you can do with the laser. And uh, this is a 5.5 watt module, and it's really simple to attach to the front plate here. 
but you can always use different tools. The Acro system is built for many different applications. So don't feel like you're stuck in with the laser, but on this video in particular, I'm gonna show you how to attach this laser to this front plate. So we need to go ahead and gather these parts that we see here. So what we have here is our two conductor wire times two. These are both gonna be at seven feet. So I also have my laser here, which I purchased online. It's pretty simple to find. Um, we also have our three pin connector here, which is a male three pin connector. And then we have three M3 eight millimeter screws. Now this is gonna be attaching the laser to this front plate here, which we're at the front of the machine of the Acro. And of course I have my tooling here, which I have my ball drivers and a flathead screwdriver. So that's pretty much all you'll need for this step besides the female connector here that's attached to the laser module. So what I did basically is this when it comes stock, you'll see uh, an additional wire here with a different pin connector attached. And some of these laser modules do come with their own 12 volt power supply. I wanna make this compatible with the Open Builds extension wiring system. So what I've done here is I just snipped off the wires. I made this kind of short here, as you can see. And uh, I attached my female connector to the end here based on the indications on my laser module. So you have your 12 volt, your ground, and your PWN, which is pulsed width modulation. So here on the connector, you'll see I'm working my way from left to right. I've got my red, which is the positive, the 12 volts, then the ground, and then the signal over here to the right. Just make sure if you're uh, using this video for reference that you do wire it like this. Okay, so to get started here, first we're gonna go ahead and attach the laser to the front plate here, and then we're gonna work on our wires and the connection system that we're gonna hook up for this laser module specifically. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the front plate. So here on the front plate, you'll see four screws. We're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of those and take this front plate off. You'll notice that there's a double T-nut behind the front plate, and you should be aware of that due to uh, the mechanical assembly, it's part of that portion. So taking those double T-nuts off, and then there's gonna be a spacer in between the front plate and your X gantry plate. So just be aware of that because the parts will fall off. So these are my spacers and then my double T-nuts here. I'm just gonna keep those off to the side for now. And then of course we have our screws with our shims. So make sure when you do take these screws off, you just keep those shims attached to the screws. It just helps for the assembly. So I'm also gonna put those over there with the double T-nuts and spacers. Now for this front plate, you're gonna see all kinds of different hole spacings here. So this is adaptable to many different applications. So specifically, since we're using the laser module, go ahead and show you how we're gonna mount this. On the back end of the laser module, you'll see this configuration here of the different holes that you can adapt your plate to. So taking the front plate here, I'm going to use this slotted hole here in the plate and attach my M3 8 millimeter screws to each one of these holes here. And that's gonna hold this laser in place. So let's go ahead and take those screws here and attach them to each one of these holes. I just like to thread them in place and then just fasten them in with the ball driver. So once you have those screws attached here, you'll see that the position of my laser is slightly above the plate, which you can always change that configuration based on these hole spacings here if you like, or you can change it up. There's many different hole spacings here that you could use. So for this video, I'm using those three, but once again, that's completely up to you. You can always change the focus here and drop the plate down based on how far into the material you want to laser. If you're trying to do rastering, it's completely up to you and it can be modified. So don't feel like you're stuck in this situation. So now that we have those screws attached to our laser module, let's go ahead and bring this back to the front of our X carriage. We're gonna go ahead and insert our screws with those precision shims attached. Okay, from there I'm gonna add my spacers. So these black spacers here. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and run this into the slotted holes of the X carriage. And working on one side at a time here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my double T-nut to the back of the screws, and then I'm gonna fasten it into place. Okay, so that's one side down. Let's go ahead and move to our second side here. Once again, just put that double T-nut behind the screws and just fasten it into place. And you'll see what I'm saying as far as the adjustment goes on this front plate. All you have to do is loosen these screws and you can actually drop this front plate. So you can uh, change the focus of your laser and it's just really useful. So let's go ahead and move on to the connection of our wires. So coming back here to our two conductor wires, we're gonna do something unique for this module specifically because 
There's only one ground provided, which is generally used for your power supply unit. So what I'm going to do is tie in my grounds together into this three pin connector. That way we have a ground provided to both our power supply unit as well as our controller. So the controller we're gonna be using is the black box. So it just really works out well and just follow along with what I do here. I'm gonna loosen my pins up for the connection of these two conductor wires. So just finding the ends of both of the two conductor wire here, we're gonna go ahead and tie in our two ground cables here. So basically what I'm doing is just twisting these together. Okay, so I'm basically making one wire out of two here. And from there, you're gonna have three wires. So taking the three pin male connector here, I'm gonna go ahead and put one of the red wires here on the right side. The ground, of course, is gonna go in the middle. And then the second red wire is gonna go to the left. I'm gonna make sure these are fully inserted and then tighten down your pins on top here. All right, once you have this tightened down, just go ahead and give those a good tug. Make sure that they're fully inserted and that looks good. So that's how we adapted these cables. Let's go ahead and turn our attention back to our laser module. So here at the top of the laser module, you see the female connector that we've already attached to the laser module. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the male connector and adapt that. And you'll see that our red here goes with our positive. And then we have a red here to the left, which is our signal wire. And then of course our ground is in the middle. So since we split that ground off into two two conductor wires, we're just gonna go ahead and separate these, throw them to the back of our system for right now, because the next step, we're gonna go ahead and label all these wires so there's no confusion when we go back to our controller board. So now that we have that connection established, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and label all of our wires specific to the point of origin. So we're gonna just organize everything and make sure that we have everything identified so there's no confusion when we get back to our controller board. So let's go ahead and start with our x-axis motor here. So all we need to gather in this step, we'll just have our painter's tape and a permanent marker. So we're just gonna go ahead and start here with the back end of the X carriage. So you can see I have my machine once again turned towards the back. It's a good place to start. So that basically just allows you to have access to all of your wires here. And it's just easier just to identify where they're located. So let's go ahead and start off with our X carriage motor here. So I'm gonna go ahead and locate that wire. And from there, I'm just gonna take a piece of painter's tape. And what I like to do is just wrap it around the wire completely. And it might be a little harder to write on, but honestly it works out better because you don't have to worry about it getting snagged on any type of uh, flex tubing. So we're gonna be organizing these wires into flex tubing. And if there was a flag, sometimes it gets caught and just gets ripped off and then you don't know which wire is which. So it's just best just to go ahead and wrap it around. And taking your permanent marker, I'm gonna label this one XM for X motor. It's like so. Okay, moving on to our laser module. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. We have two wires here that we need to identify. So we have one that's going to our power supply unit, and then we have one that's gonna to go to our controller board. So we need to label those specific to what they're going to be attaching to. So here on the laser module, you'll see our female connector and our male pin connector. What we're looking for is our signal, which is here on the left, and then our power, which is on the right. So what we need to do is grab the wire here that's on the left, so that's gonna be the point of origin here for the left wire. And let's trace that back. And this is going to be labeled laser control. So I'm just gonna label it LC. So I know specifically that this is gonna to go to my controller board. So once again, we're just gonna wrap this tape all the way around the wire. And like I said, I'm gonna label this LC. Okay, so since we have our laser control wire identified here, which is on the left side, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to the right cable, which is gonna to go to our power supply. So again, trace that one back. And we're gonna label this one LP, so that's laser power. So, and of course you can label these any way that you like. This is just works easy for me. So wrap that tape all the way around. And LP. Okay, so moving on here, we're gonna go ahead and locate our micro limit switch here for our Y axis, which is over here on the left side of the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and trace that one back. And you'll see here that it's a three conductor wire because it is a micro limit switch. Okay, once we have the tape connected here, so I'm gonna go ahead and label this one YL for Y limit. 
So once again, focusing here on the left side of the machine, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and grab the Y motor, which is over here on the left side, if you're to face the back of the machine. And this will be a four conductor wire. So that's a sign here that you have a motor wire. And we're just going to label this one YM for Y motor. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and focus on the right side of the machine here, starting with our X limit switch. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one here. And once again, this will be a three conductor wire. And we're going to label this one XL for X limit. All right, and last we'll have our Y2 motor, which is also on the right side of the machine, which is also a four conductor wire. And this one I'm going to label Y2M. So that's our Y2 motor. And once you have all those wires labeled, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we need to go ahead and gather these parts. What we have here is two and a half feet of our corrugated tubing. We have two flex tubing clamps, one M3 T-nut, one precision shim, one drop-in T-nut, one M58 millimeter screw, one M3 12 millimeter screw. Of course, I have my ball driver set here to assist in the assembly. So what we need to go ahead and do is locate these three wires. So what we have here coming off of the X gantry plate is our X motor wire. We have two of our two conductors, which comes off of our laser diode. And these three wires are going to run through the flex tubing. So let's go ahead and start there. So what I like to do is locate the ends of all three wires. And I'm going to just feed this through the flex tubing. It's just the easiest way to get it done. You can always split down the middle here, the flex tubing as well. It's completely up to you. I just find this to be a little bit easier just to run it all the way through the flex tubing. And once you have it through the flex tubing, just go ahead and pull the slack through. Okay, and once you have all the slack pulled through, let's go ahead and grab one of our flex tubing clamps. And we're going to go ahead and align this to the position where we want this to be mounted. So using this right hole here on the back of our x-axis gantry plate, that's exactly where I'm going to mount this flex tubing clamp. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the flex tubing. And pressing down on the flex tubing clamp, I'm going to go ahead and take my precision shim and my M3 12 millimeter screw and run it through the flex tubing clamp and then through the gantry plate. So remember on that right hole. And once you have the screw through, just go ahead and take the M3 T-nut and tighten that M3 12 millimeter screw to the M3 T-nut. Okay, so once you have that clamped down, just make sure you do have it tight. Otherwise, you'll have a shifting motion here in the flex tubing clamp. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that down a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking sharp. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the bottom end of the flex tubing clamp. So here at the bottom of the flex tubing, I'm going to go ahead and take my flex tubing clamp. Once again, I'm just going to run it on top of the flex tubing and press down. And what I like to do is run my M5 eight millimeter screw through the clamp. And then from the back end, I tie on my M5 drop in T nut. And that way it kind of holds it into position. And from there, you can always just push this gantry forward. And I'm going to go ahead and find the midpoint here of the back end of my 20 by 20. So this is part of the frame. And I'm going to go ahead and press the drop in T-nut into the track and tighten it down. Okay, so once you have that in position, that completes this assembly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we're going to go ahead and do some wire management. So basically what we need to do is run our cables along the length of our x-axis. We're going to use two of our thousand millimeter slot covers, one on the back side and one on the front side. So the one on the front side is going to be for our micro limit switch for the x-axis. The one on the back side is going to be for our Y2 motor, which is going to run through our gantry plate along the length and come back to the left side, which is our Y axis gantry plate and run through there. So first, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the right side towards our Y2 motor gantry plate. So here on the right side, if you were to face the back of the machine, we have our Y2 motor. Let's go ahead and locate the end of that motor wire. And once you have it located, what we're going to do is feed it through this left hole here on the gantry plate. So let's go ahead and feed that through. 
And from there, I'm just going to pull all this slack through this gantry plate. So once you have all the slack pulled through, what we're going to do now is just focus here on the bottom track of this 20 by 40. And we're going to run this wire through the slot behind the gantry plate. And once you have all the slack pulled through, we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the y-axis gantry plate. And we're going to feed this wire through this gantry plate as well. So here on the left side of the machine, if you were to face the back, we'll see our y-axis gantry plate. And we need to focus on this hole here. It's where our wire is going to feed through. So let's go ahead and take the end of our Y2 motor and we're going to run this wire through that hole and once again we're going to pull all the slack through the system. So now that we have our wire in position we need to go ahead and take one of our slot covers and we're going to go ahead and run it through the bottom track here and secure our wire into place. So what I like to do is just start on this side first where the gantry plate is and I'm going to slide my slot cover into position. So basically what I'm doing now is just feeding that slot cover through the gantry plate here. I'm going to push it all the way down. That way I can work with the rest of my length here on the right side. All right, that looks great. So now that our slot cover is in place here on the back side of the machine, let's go ahead and rotate our machine around so we can work on the front side, which will be for a micro limit switch. Okay, so now that we're facing the front of the machine here, what we're going to do is go ahead and take our micro limit switch wire here and just like we did on the back side for the Y2 motor, we're going to run it through the bottom slot, through our gantry plate, and through our Y axis gantry plate here on the right side if you're to face the front of the machine. So I'm going to pull all the slack through and you'll notice here with the position of the X axis micro limit switch, we're going to have to take a little bit off of the slot cover that's going to go in this position. So we'll do that once we get to the slot cover. But first, let's go ahead and run this through our Y-axis gantry plate. So taking a look here at the Y-axis gantry plate, we're going to go ahead and run it through this hole on the bottom slot. And once again, we're going to pull all that slack through. Okay, now like we did with the uh, back side for the Y motor, we're going to take our slot cover and slide into position. But before we do so, we're just going to take a little bit off. So I'd say approximately... Uh, 15 millimeters off the end of the slot cover. You can see I've got uh, this end here. I'm just gonna trim that off. Now I'm gonna take the slot cover, placing it on top of the wire. Once again, I wanna feed it through this gantry plate before I secure it into place. So I'm just gonna slide it down. So once you have the slot cover slid down, I'm just simply placing it into the 20 by 40 here. All right, and once you have the slot cover in position, once again, just pull that slack through the system. And now that we have our slot covers in position here, we have some of the wire management completed along the x-axis. It's looking really sharp. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our y-axis flex tubing. So what we have here is two feet of our flex tubing. We also have two flex tubing clamps, one self-tapping screw, and I have a 500 millimeter slot cover that I've cut down to 460 millimeters to fit in this bottom track here. And this is for our micro limit switch wire. Along with that, I also have my tooling, a ball driver, open build spanner wrench, and a power drill here. So to get started first, what we need to do is locate the wires that's gonna run through the flex tubing. So what do I have here is two wires that are coming through my y-axis gantry plate. I also have my y-axis motor wire. So just these three wires are gonna be ran through the flex tubing. So let's go ahead and find the ends first of these wires. So now that I've located the three wires that I'm gonna be feeding through this flex tubing, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flex tubing here and I'm gonna run it through the flex tubing. So this way I just, I found to be easier than opening this and running the wires through. It's, um, it's not hard to feed those through, so if you prefer to do it that way, that's completely up to your preference. I uh, just like to run the wires through. It's quick and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these wires through now. And once the wires come through, I'm just gonna pull the slack through the flex tubing here. Okay, so now that I've got all the slack pulled through the flex tubing here, let's go ahead and attach our first flex tubing clamp here to the top of the flex tubing. So one thing to pay attention to as well is just make sure that your flex tubing clamp 
is matching what I have here. The orientation is important for the way that we're going to configure this to the Y axis. So essentially what we're going to see is the flex tubing wrap around the motor and it's going to attach to the back end of the 20 by 20. And this flex tubing clamp is going to attach to our M5 15 millimeter screw here. Okay, so here at the Y axis gantry plate, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and loosen this screw here. So I'm just going to use a spanner wrench and my ball driver and just pop this loose. Okay, once you have that nylon hex nut taken off, we're going to take the flex tubing clamp and align it onto the screw. Once you have the clamp in position, what I like to do is take the nylon hex nut and just go ahead and thread it onto the screw. So once you have it threaded onto the screw, we're just going to go ahead and tighten this back down into place. So just make sure that's nice and tight. That looks good so far. So now we're going to go ahead and take the bottom of the flex tubing here. And what I'm going to do is run it underneath the motor. Okay, so as you can see, the flex tubing here is running underneath my NEMA 17 motor here on the Y gantry plate. So now what I'm going to do is use another one of my flex tubing clamps and clamp this back into the flex tubing. And clamping that into place, I'm going to use my self-tapping screw and tap right into this 20 by 20 here. So what I like to do is just use a self-tapping screw, run it through the actual clamp, and then I'm going to use my power drill and just drill that into place. Okay, so just make sure the orientation here is correct. What I like to do is just lift up on these flex tubing clamps as well. You can always uh, just position them into uh, the position that you want. You can also twist and turn it to get the position right. So what I'm looking for is just that wrap around underneath the motor and then the attachment here to the 20 by 20. So that looks great. So now let's go ahead and move on to the micro limit switch. So here at the micro limit switch, what I'm gonna do is just find the end of our micro limit switch wire. So this is for the Y axis. And what I'm gonna do is just run this through this bottom track here, the 20 by 40 through the gantry plate, similar how we did the X micro limit switch and our Y2 motor. And I'm gonna pull all this slack through, that way we can insert our slot cover. So I found the position that I wanted, now I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in my slot cover and slide that on down through the 20 by 40. Okay, so this is looking really nice. We have our micro limit switch wire ran through with the slot cover. All of our wires are coming out to this corner and we're gonna to get to the wire management portion in just a second. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and wire up our black box. We have also a 12 volt power supply that's going to power our laser in this particular build. We also have our 24 volt power supply. I've got my connectors here, which all come with the black box. I also have the seven foot power cable that comes with your power supply kit. And of course, the power supply cord that will provide power to the power supply. So along with that, for these assemblies specifically, I will link the builds in the description for both the black box and the power case kit. It's a really easy assembly. So as you can see, mine are already assembled here. So once you have that complete, Basically what we're going to do next is go ahead and wire up our system first starting with the laser. So this 12 volt power supply came with the laser and most modules will come with a 12 volt power supply. So you don't want to connect your 24 volt power supply to a 12 volt laser. So that's just something to keep in mind for this particular build since we're using a 12 volt laser we're going to use our 12 volt power supply. So let's go ahead and take notice to the 12 volt power supply here. As you can see, I've basically stripped off the end of the 12 volt power supply. And the reason for doing so is I'm gonna adapt the extension connection system. So I have two of these two pin connectors. I'm gonna take the female and connect it here to my stripped wire. So that's where I'm gonna start first by loosening each one of these pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire red to the right and blue to the left here on the connector and just tighten that down and that should be the end result there. So we also have the male two pin connector and this is going to attach to our laser. So when we labeled all of our wires, we labeled one of those wires specifically for the power supply unit. So we'll get into that once we start searching for these wires. So let's go ahead and locate those two conductor wires here. They're gonna be running from this X carriage flex tubing. So you're gonna have two because we split that off at a three pin connector. So right here we have a laser signal, I labeled LS, 
and then LP for laser power. So we're gonna use a laser power and we're gonna go ahead and connect that to our two pin connector here. So this is a male two pin connector that's gonna to adapt to the female. So I'm gonna loosen these pins and insert the wire. So in this particular case, red is gonna be our power, black is gonna be our ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect red to the left with the pins facing upright and black to the right with the pins facing up. So go ahead and tighten those into place. Okay, once those are connected, all we have to do is adapt both male and female, just like so. So now we have power provided to our laser. So we'll just go ahead and put that to the side for now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to our three pin connectors and then our four pin connectors. So once again, part of the assembly of the black box, you basically take these connectors off. They all come assembled to the black box and then you'll assemble your case and you're left with these, these connectors. So we're gonna utilize all these connectors here for this particular build, we only use two micro limit switches, so you will have one left over. And we also have four of the four pin connectors. So three will be used for motors, and then one will be used for our tool head. So that's basically the signal that's gonna be sent to the laser to tell it to turn on and off. So we have four of those four pin connectors here. So let's go ahead and locate our micro limit switches first. So here I have the Y limit switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one first and loosen my connectors here, the three, three pin connector. So now taking the three conductor wire here for our limit switch, we're gonna go ahead and put the wires in this order. So working our way from left to right, we'll have black, red, and then blue, just like so with the pens facing upright. And let's go ahead and connect that. Okay, give those a tug, make sure that the wires are connected properly and that looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to our next limit switch, which will be the X limit switch. So once you've found your X limit switch, let's go ahead and do the same thing. Just go ahead and loosen those pins first, and then we'll connect our wire. So once again, working our way from left to right here with the pins facing upright, black will go to the left, red in the middle, and then blue on the right side. And then go ahead and connect those. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're inserted properly, and that looks good. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and move on to our four pin connectors. What I've grabbed here is my Y2 motor, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect that one into this four pin connector. Once again, just make sure you loosen those pin connectors. You can see that mine are already loosened. So with the Y2 motor, since this is a Cartesian style belt driven machine, what we need to do is invert our Y2 motor. So our Y axis motor is going to work right from left with the red, blue, green, and yellow. So what we need to do is invert those wires for the Y2 motor. That way our motors move in the same direction. Left to right, I'm gonna go ahead and insert red, blue, green, and then yellow. So that's the inverted wire color. So you can see reds on the left side here. So just follow what I have and then tighten those down. So that's what you should see with the inverted axis. Red, blue, green, and yellow, working our way from left to right. Now the rest of the motor is going to be right to left, which will mean red, blue, green, and yellow. So now that we have that one complete, let's go ahead and put it to the side and let's move on to our next motor. So our next motor here is for the Y axis. So let's go ahead and take one of our four pin connectors and loosen all of those pins. So since this is our Y motor, this does not need to be inverted. We're going to work our way from right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow just like so, and then tighten those pins down. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. Okay, now moving on to our next motor, which will be the X-axis motor. We're gonna go ahead and connect that to our four pin connector. First loosening the pins, and then we'll go ahead and connect it the same way we did our Y-axis motor. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. Okay, and lastly, we have our two conductor wire that's coming off of the laser, which this is our laser signal. So this needs to connect to the black box, to the tool head section, which has this four pin connector. So basically what we need to do is loosen these two pins here on the left side if the pins are faced up. And black will go on the left hand side, red will go to the next pin over. So we have black and red for these two pins and then just go ahead and connect that and give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted and that looks good. So now that we have all of our connectors attached, we're gonna go ahead and connect those to the black box. But first I wanna go ahead and turn our attention to our 24 volt power supply. Once you have the case built onto the power supply, 
there's one thing that you might want to do here if you're in the states you're going to switch this little switch here you see how i have it on 115 volt that's exactly what you want so if you're starting off at the 230 volt you're going to want to switch that over to the 115. okay with that being said we'll just go ahead and take our our power cord here for the power supply plug that in and then take our power cable here that's going to provide power to the black box and we're going to choose one of these outputs here i'm just going to go ahead and select the one here on the right and just plug it in like so and then on the black box you'll see the power supply section here that's where we're going to go ahead and connect the opposite end of the power cord so next just taking some of these cables here that we got the pins attached to we have our x motor the x motor on the back end of the black box you'll see indications here for all your motors we're going to go ahead and locate the x motor and connect this four pin connector next i'm going to go ahead and take my four pin connector for the laser signal and on the back end where the fuse is located on the black box you'll see tool head we're going to go ahead and insert the four pin connector and you should see black as your ground red as your positive and it should look exactly like that so just go ahead and insert that one next i have my x micro limit switch so i'm going to go ahead and locate x limit which is right here and i'm going to plug this one in following that i have my y2 motor so i'm going to go ahead and locate y2 motor and plug this one in next i have my y motor so i'm going to locate the y motor section here and go ahead and plug this one in and last we have our y limit switch and we're just going to locate y limit and go ahead and connect that okay so now that we have all of our connections established here we have our power supply built black box built all the connections are inputted into each one of these systems as well as our 12 volt power supply for our laser let's go ahead and move on to the next step okay so on this next step we're going to go ahead and do some serious wire management here so we need to go ahead and gather is two and a half feet of our corrugated tubing you also need 25 zip ties three of our flex tubing clamps, two M5 six millimeter screws, and two drop-in T-nuts, which come with the black box kit. Then a three additional drop-in T-nuts and three M5 eight millimeter screws. And then along with that, I have my tooling, I have some snips, and my M5 ball driver. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and start off with a black box. So what we need to go ahead and do is mount this black box over here on the right side of the machine. So we're gonna use our two M5 six millimeter screws and two drop-in T-nuts to do just that. So taking the black box here, we're gonna go ahead and take our X motor connector out real quick so we can just tie in one of our M5 six millimeter screws right here on the second hole. So we're gonna go ahead and tie that one in first. And then we can go ahead and plug our X motor back in. And then on the opposite side, once again on the second hole here, go ahead and put one of your M5 six millimeter screws. You might need to unplug the tool head and just go ahead and plug the tool head back in. Then on the back end of the black box here, we're going to go ahead and tie in our drop-in T-nuts. Then we're going to go ahead and take the black box here and connect it to that 20 by 20 here on the base. So I like to position it here towards this right foot. And once you have it in the position that you like, just go ahead and tighten down those screws. Okay, so now that we have the black box mounted here, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the corrugated tubing. And let's get some of this wire management done. Okay, so taking the corrugated tubing here, now we're just gonna go ahead and take these wires. So we have a two conductor wire here that's attached to the tool head. We're also gonna tie this one into the corrugated tubing. So I'm gonna start here at the black box. So what I like to do is run that one laser control tool head wire. I like to run that one underneath the black box. And then I like to just go ahead and connect these wires all as one. Just kind of run that into the corrugated tubing here. All you have to do is split the end and tuck the wire in. And then once you get it started, we're just going to go ahead and run along the length of the corrugated tubing here and just insert all this wire. Now the only wire that we're going to keep separated here is the one that goes to our 12 volt power supply. So we're going to use a slot cover later on and tie that into our 20 by 20. But for now, we're just going to leave that outside of the corrugated tubing. Okay, so once you get to a certain point, you'll see that we do have additional slack here left over from the x-axis corrugated tubing. So what I like to do is just leave it with some length here because we're going to stretch this along the back end of the machine. So I'm going to leave these two cords about right here. And then once we get the rest of the cords fed into the corrugated tubing, 
I'm going to layer these on top and zip tie this point here. So just keep that in mind while you're filling in this corrugated tubing with your wiring. Okay, so once you have the wire inserted into this corrugated tubing here, like I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and layer these two cords into the corrugated tubing. So I'm just going to press back down into the corrugated tubing here. The easiest way to do this is really to open up one side and just tuck the wires as you go. So once we have our wires layered over on top here, remember don't include this wire here. This is strictly for power supply to the laser. We want to leave that loose. We want that to run to the right side of the machine here. So, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take one of my flex tubing clamps here. I'm going to run it on top of these wires that we layered over. And this is really just going to hold it into place. And you see the orientation of my flex clamp here. It's because I'm going to mount underneath the 20 by 20 on this acro system. So just keep that in mind to make sure to match what I have here. Because we're going to go ahead and mount underneath this 20 by 20. So now that we have one in place here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is run one of my eight millimeter screws through the flex tubing clamp, and then I'm gonna tie on one of my drop-in T-nuts. Okay, so here at the flex tubing clamp, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pull the acro system back here. That way I can access underneath the 20 by 20. I'm gonna mount this into place. So now that I got this pulled off the table here slightly, I'm gonna go ahead and run my drop-in T-nut right into the bottom here, and I'm gonna tighten that down. Okay, so once you have that flex tubing in place, we're going to go ahead and move on down. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Just go ahead and wrap your flex tubing clamp around the corrugated tubing here. Clamp it shut, and then we're going to go underneath. Once we have our 8 millimeter screw and drop in T-nut, tie it into place. Okay, so moving right along here, we're going to go ahead and put another flex tubing clamp here on the end of the flex tubing. So you should have an additional length here that ties in with the flex tubing on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and grab that flex tubing clamp. And once again, just clamping this tubing into place, I'm going to go ahead and run my 8 millimeter screw through and then tie that on with a drop-in T-nut. All right, so I'm going to run this underneath the 20 by 20 like we did the others and then just tighten that into place. So now that we have that flex tubing in place, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the wire management. So right here on the x-axis flex tubing, you'll see that our additional wire that provides power to our laser module is left out of the flex tubing. And what we're going to do with that is use our 500 millimeter slot cover here that came with the kit. And we're going to slide that into the top track here of the 20 by 20 to secure that into place. So what I'm going to do is pull some of the slack here. And once I get in the position that I want, I'm going to go ahead and slide the slot cover here, and then I'm going to run it on down the right side. So once you have your slot cover in place, you should have the length here available. What I like to do is just slide that past this leg here of the acro system, and then I just run that back here with the power cable that attaches to the power supply. So we want these to be loose. That way we can mount our power supplies on a work surface or underneath our table. I just prefer not to have it attached to the machine. That way we keep everything nice and aesthetic. So over here on the left side, what I like to do with the additional length of wire that's hanging loose here is I like to bundle it and then zip tie it. And we're gonna do is tie it underneath this flex tubing here. So I'm just gonna layer this into a nice neat bundle. And it's always nice to have this additional length just in case you wanted to configure something differently. That's completely up to you. So once you have the wire bundled, do is take a zip tie here, tie that into place. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on down this bundle here and just tighten it down. Sometimes you can take two of the zip ties to make a larger zip tie here. And it just helps with fitting this around this bundle. All right, I'm going to do that once again on this top portion of the bundle. So once you get that bundle nice and tight here, what I like to do is just run it underneath the corrugated tubing. And from there, I just take two of my zip ties combine them together and we're going to run it across this flex tubing and essentially what we're trying to do is just get that bundle to stay with the flex tubing here on this one corner and once you get that into position just snip off the excess here of the zip tie and once again this wire management here is completely up to your preference I like to keep this additional length of wire like I said if I want to configure something differently so I just keep it tucked away here 
with the rest of the corrugated tubing and it just stays out of the way until I want to use additional length of wire. So let's go ahead and move on to the additional components that we're going to go ahead and zip tie. Okay, so coming back here to the back of the machine, what I like to do is zip tie each one of these connectors and that'll prevent any type of pulling motion that might cause these connect connectors to separate. So what I like to do is just go ahead and take one of the zip ties and right here we're at the X axis. So let's go ahead and zip tie that connector. So taking the zip tie, what I do is I run it through the middle of the wires here, back around, same thing on the opposite end. And then I just attach the zip tie. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move to the left side of the machine, which will be for our Y axis. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing to that connector. Okay, so same thing, we're gonna go ahead and run the zip tie through the middle of the wires. So now that we have that one complete, let's go ahead and move to the right side of the machine, which will be for our Y2 motor. Let's go ahead and run the zip tie through the wire here, just like we did our others. All right, so now that we have that one complete, let's go ahead and return back to the back of the machine where the black box is located. Now right over here, what I like to do is zip tie these wires together, including the signal wire here that's attached to the laser that goes around the black box. So what I like to do is just pull that tight and then I zip tie the wires here right at the end. And that keeps all the wires in a bundle, which is really convenient if you wanna just unplug this, move your black box around. Okay, so right here at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more zip tie just to make sure these wires are secure. Another thing to keep in mind too is you don't wanna to put too much pressure on these wires because they will come loose. So I like to leave a little slack here and just make sure all your connectors are still plugged into the black box. Okay, so lastly, we have our three pin connector here that's attached to our laser module. So we just wanna go ahead and use a zip tie. Let's go ahead and fasten that into place as well. Okay, so that completes the wire aesthetic portion. Man, we got everything tied together and it's looking sweet. This machine is definitely looking nice and neat. It's exactly how we want it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, all we need to do is just gather our USB cable. We're gonna go ahead and plug it into our laptop or the device that you're gonna be using to control your machine. So let's go ahead and grab the USB cable and simply plug it into the USB port of your laptop or the device that you're going to use. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to the black box and I'll show you where to plug in the serial port. So on the right side of the black box here, we're gonna simply just plug in the other end of your USB cable, so this is for the serial port. Just go ahead and plug it in. And we're not adding any power to any of our devices yet, so don't plug in your power supply or your black box. This is simply going to be for the purpose of configuring our settings through Gerbil. Okay, so now that we have our USB connection established, let's go ahead and open up our device and let's move on to the software portion. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up the browser and let's go to openbuilds.com. From there, you'll see tabs at the top. We're gonna to select software and select Open Builds Control Machine Driver. And once again, you'll see Windows, Mac, and Linux are options to download. I'm using a Windows computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and download that executable. Go ahead and save that to a location in your computer. And then I'm gonna select that executable here at the bottom. Okay, then you'll be given a prompt saying Windows protected your PC. We're gonna select more info and run anyway. Go ahead and go through the prompts and install. Go ahead and select finish. You'll see that the open builds control has started. Go ahead and select it. And once you have the open builds controller open, we're gonna go to our COM section here. So we see COM3 is the default. We're gonna select the second option here, which is COM25 and then connect. Now we haven't powered anything on yet. This is simply the communication between the laptop and the controller board. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our settings through Gerbil. So that's the first tab that we're gonna select. So go ahead and select Gerbil settings. And what's really cool about the software is anything that you purchase from Open Builds, especially machine bundles, you're gonna have default settings. So what you see here is low default settings. So we're gonna go ahead and select the machine type that we have, which I'm using an Acro 510, but we have options for all the different machine types and it's that easy. You select your machine and from there, you're going to receive a prompt. This is custom firmware required. So this is actually gonna update your firmware specific to this machine type. 
So what we need to do is go ahead and select yes. We do want to update the firmware for this machine. So go ahead and select yes and you will let your controller basically do its job. It's gonna go ahead and give you updates here. And once it's complete, you'll be able to reconnect. Okay, so let's go ahead and select the second option. Once again, COM25 is for my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. And going back here to Gerbil settings, I'm gonna make sure that I do have my machine type selected. So this is the Acro 510. I do have limit switches installed. So that's part of the default setting. And basically all you do is save this to your firmware, which will have this option right here on the left side, which pops up. And you're just gonna select that and save it to your firmware. And all of your parameters and values are going to be inputted into the black box motion control system. Okay, so now that we have our settings updated to our control board, let's go ahead and jog the machine around and make sure that everything's functioning correctly. So let's go ahead and power up our machine. So once you have your machine powered on, you should hear the black box engage. You'll hear the fan spinning as well as the motors engage as well. So that's just an indicator of proper power being provided to your system. Now here on the software side of things, the first thing you'll see is an unlock alarm state. So this alarm is just precautionary for any type of problems that you might have initially when you start your machine. So it's just a safety precaution to protect the user. So all we have to do is unlock the alarm and now our machine is ready to move. Now one thing that I like to pay attention here to is the increments down here at the bottom. So you'll see 10 millimeters, 100 millimeters, one millimeter and 0.1 millimeters. So to start off when jogging your machine, generally I start off with the one millimeter, especially if you have a Z axis attached to your system, this one doesn't specifically. So it's really just a good idea to always start off with one millimeters depending on where the machine is located. So right now I'm in the middle but I'm just gonna go through this if, if my machine was on the left or right side. So first let's start off with the x-axis. Now positive movement is gonna move to the right. A negative movement is gonna come here to the left side, which is close to our x-axis micro limit switch. So let's go ahead and do a positive movement real quick. Okay, positive is moving correctly. Negative is moving correctly. So I'm gonna move this up to 10 millimeter increments. And as you can see, this machine is operating great. Smooth movement here on the x-axis. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now, same thing for the y-axis. We're going to go ahead and move down to one millimeter increments just to test out the system. A y plus movement is going to move back towards your controller board. Negative is going to move back towards the front of the machine. So let's test that. That looks good. So negative movements moving back. So let's bump that up to 10 millimeters. And you can see this machine is moving great. Very precise. Motors sound great. The black box is working excellent. This is really exciting. Okay, so we know that our machine is functioning correctly. All of our movements are correct. So we don't have to change anything in the Gerbil settings. There are a couple things that I want to just review with the software as well as Gerbil settings. Now the software is very intuitive, so there's a lot of things that have just been simplified on the actual control software. So if you go into advanced settings here, you'll see options for values and the Gerbil commands, which is the dollar sign, like dollar sign zero, dollar sign one. That's all Gerbil language. What's really cool about this, especially for like step direction invert, if you wanted to invert an axis because you prefer it in another way, all you have to do is select these pins here and you can invert that axis, it's that easy. So you select that and then you save the firmware and it'll change the direction that your axis is moving. So along with that, you also have a fine tune wizard which is really helpful for your machine if you wanna fine tune your parameters, especially if it's a custom machine. You have this option here so you can run through the fine tune option. Your machine will run through some steps and then from there, It'll calculate the value based on the machine's position. So then from there, it'll input this into the steps per millimeter. So all you do is save the firmware once you've calibrated your machine, and that's it. It's that easy. So it's just really nice. And you can also adjust the accelerations here. And this is you know called advanced settings for a reason. So when you're a new user and you're, you're coming into CNC, it's always safe to just start with the default settings that we provide for you. We've tested these machines vigorously, so just 
make sure that you just stick with the default settings, work with your machine a little bit before you get comfortable and you wanna change these settings. So that's the advanced settings portion of the OpenBuilds control software. So if we go back to the control tab, there's a couple other things too that's really cool about the software. And it's just, like I said, very intuitive. So it's pretty much self-explanatory. But the cool thing is up here at the top, you have tool options. So you select this, you have options to activate your spindle. If you have a relay set up on your machine, laser, which is really cool, especially for adjusting the focus on your laser. So you can set this up based on the percentages, which you always start off with a 5% when you're adjusting your laser and always make sure to use eye protection and turn that laser off before you focus it. So safety first. You also have the plasma and cooling options here. Okay, and then you have the tool off, which is very important. So whenever you wanna turn that tooling off, you're just gonna to run to this section and select that. You also have your homing cycle, which we're gonna go over in just a little bit, but that's for your micro limit switches. Then you have a jog widget as well. So you can select this, scan the QR code, and jog your machine from your phone, which is really convenient. Definitely love that aspect. Also here on the control side, you'll see that we have the openbuilds.com. So you can just always select this and go straight to the forum. You can also select the cam software so you can upload some G code to your control. And on the bottom here, you see tabs for serial console, macros, G code editor, and then the 3D viewer which is really nice. You can move this around, you can zoom out, zoom in, so you can see where your project is while you're manufacturing, which is really nice. Also up here at the top, you have this open G code, so you can open up files. You can open G code, .tap files. So if you're using different CAM software, generally those are compatible with the software, which is really nice. You can always just open the browser for the OpenBuilds CAM software, which is really nice. Then over here to the left side, if you're not familiar with control software, these are your digital readouts. So also known as DROs, digital readouts are very important. This is gonna show you how far your machine's moved. You also have your set zero position, go to zero position. And we'll go over that as we start our first job on this machine. So another thing I wanna go over is this third tab, which is the troubleshooting tab. This is very helpful for making sure that your limits are working correctly. So you also have probe, door sensor, and buttons here at the bottom. So if you have those applications applied to your machine, that's a good way to test it. So let's go ahead and test our X limit first. And what you'll see once I activate the limit switch, hard limits are triggered, which is also a safety precaution. So if your machine's going in the wrong direction or it's moving too far for a job that you're working on, the hard limit will be triggered and your machine will stop. So it's really convenient. So what I'm gonna do is just cancel. You can just clear the alarm to unlock the alarm state. But I wanna show you the indication here. So if you watch X limit and I hit the plunger on the limit switch, you'll see that it turns on. So we know that our micro limit switch is working here for the X axis. I would go ahead and try the Y as well, which is on the right side of the machine. We know that's functioning correctly. Then we can move forward. Another cool thing about the troubleshooting tab is you have options to go to the OpenBuilds forum. So if you have any questions or concerns about the software, we have engineers that will respond to you as soon as possible. So definitely utilize that. Another cool feature as well, we have the Gerbil flashing tool. So like we just did for this machine specifically, you can also choose your controller board based on its type. And from there, you can select the port that you're currently logged into and you can upload the newest versions of Gerbil. So Flasher is already built into the software, which is really convenient. So what we need to do is just go ahead and go back to the control tab, and we're gonna go ahead and run a homing cycle because we know our micro limit switches are functioning correctly. So let's just test that and make sure that everything is moving in the right direction. If you have any issues, always power down your machine or hit stop job, it's immediate on the software but it's always best just to power down your machine if you ever encounter any issues. So safety first here. So go ahead and home all, and you'll see that my machine is gonna go ahead and start with the X-axis first. If you do have a Z-axis incorporated into this machine, or if you're working on another machine, the Z-axis will be first, but then it'll be X, and then it's gonna move to the Y. So it's gonna go ahead and hit the micro limit switch, 
And the cool thing about these PCB micro limit switches is they have a little LED to indicate when it's activated. So right here at the top right corner, you'll see a red flash. Now it's moving to the Y axis. It's going to see the micro limit switch and then it's going to go through a homing debounce is what we call it. So it backs off five millimeters, interacts with the micro limit switch again, and then repositions. So that's awesome. Our home all feature is working. Our micro limit switches are functioning correctly on this machine. Everything is working properly. So now that we know that our machine is functioning correctly, let's go ahead and start our first project with the Acro system. So what I'm going to do is just go here to openbuilds.com. And once you reach the website, we're going to open up the OpenBuilds G-Code generator. So this is our CAM software. If you're unfamiliar with what CAM stands for, it's Computer Assisted Manufacturing. So right here, you'll see CAM G-Code generator. We're going to go ahead and select that. And once again, the CAM side of things is very intuitive as well. So you can recover a last used workspace if you were working on this before. We're going to start with a new one so we can just go over some of the settings and the parameters that we need to set up for our machine specifically. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the settings tab, select settings, and here you're going to see default settings for controller boards as well as your machine type. Now you can select a custom machine if that's what you have or using the OpenBuilds Acro system. So we have a black box we're using, that's correct. And then the Acro 510. So if you scroll through here, you'll see all the machine types that OpenBuilds offers. So if you have a different machine type, you can always just select that and it's going to automatically upload the parameters to the software, which is very convenient. So let's go ahead and select the OpenBuilds Acro 510 since that's what we're using. From here, you'll see all the parameters are correct based on the values that were calculated from OpenBuilds and then go ahead and save. So now that we have all the parameters set up on our machine, what we have here is our workspace that's displayed on the CAM software. So once again, you can zoom in, manipulate this workspace based on your preference for whatever projects you're working on. For us specifically, we're gonna to go to the workspace tab and we're gonna open up a file. And here you'll see open hello world example. And there's one provided for laser rastering. So we're gonna select that one and it's gonna upload that into your workspace. And here you'll see that the project has been inputted into your workspace. So what we need to do is go ahead and generate the G-code for this item. You'll see all your tool paths here. So we have a raster fill. We also have a path outside that's incorporated into this project. So let's go ahead and generate the G-code for this job. Okay, so now that you'll see all the tool paths here. Now all we need to do is just go ahead and transfer this G-code to the OpenBuilds control software. So go ahead and select that. And the first thing that's going to pop up is your 3D viewer here, and you'll see that the job has populated into the control software, and that is awesome. So now we are almost ready to start our project. Okay, so what I've got here is a scrap piece of wood that I found laying around the shop. I'm going to use for this first Hello World. I have some double-sided tape that I'm going to use to mount it to the work surface. And I also have some painter's tape here. What I'm going to do is just tape down my feet that are attached to the Acro system. You can also screw those into a work surface. For this table specifically, I'm not going to do that. I just, I'm gonna tape it down to make sure the machine is secure. Along with that, most important thing is safety. You're gonna need some goggles here to protect you from the laser. So make sure that you do have some safety goggles here that will protect you from that beam. It's very important, so never work on a laser without your safety goggles. So first, I'm going to go ahead and set up my material. Just going to take a couple pieces of double-sided tape and mount them to the back of the wood. So once you have your double-sided tape on your piece of material, I'm simply going to slide this underneath. And you can place this anywhere within your workspace of your machine. So I'm just going to place the material here, just like so. You want to make sure that that material is square with your system. I have a point laid out here on my table, but if you need to measure to make sure that your system's square, go ahead and do so. Now I'm going to take my painter's tape and go ahead and secure my machine into position. So I'm just going to go across these feet here. Okay, so now that we have our material in place, we have our machine secured to our work area, let's go ahead and set up our job in the software. So coming back here to the OpenBuilds control software, now what we need to do is go ahead and set up a project start point, also known as your zero point. So we're going to go ahead and move our x-axis. We need to move 
in the positive direction, which is going to be moving to the right. So I have it set at 10 millimeter increments. I'm just going to move this over. And essentially what I'm trying to do is just find the starting position on my material. So if you want to start in the middle of the material, that's completely up to you. You can always set the zero point there. But for me specifically, I want to go ahead and start at this left corner of the material. So it looks like I'm pretty close here with the Y axis. I'm going to go ahead and move the Y back. Remember that's a positive movement. You can always adjust the increments down to get more accuracy when you're moving your position. So that actually looks pretty good. So from here, you're going to set the zero point for both your X and Y. So you can do that with this option here that says set zero X, Y, and Z. We don't have a Z, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and do that for X and Y. And you'll see that your digital readouts read zero. So that's exactly what you want. Before starting any type of job, checking the size of the job, or any type of manufacturing, you always set your zero point. So it's very important to remember. So we have our zero point established. Now what I want to do is show you the check size feature here on the software, which is very helpful. What we're going to do since we have our zero point set is check the size. We want to make sure that our material is large enough to handle this job. So let's go ahead and hit check size. And it's going to go over the parameters of the job. And you can see that that's perfect. Our material is large enough. And that check size feature is awesome. It's super nice just to know where your machine is going with this project based on how you've set it up in the CAM software. So that's just a really cool feature of the software. Now we have the size checked. We have our zero point established here on our machine. So we're almost ready to start this project. So the first thing we're gonna do is check the laser to make sure that power is provided to the laser. This one specifically, I'll go over the details of how you start this laser. You simply plug in your 12 volt power supply. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in now. Once again, make sure that you're always using your eye protection. So now that you have your 12 volt power supply plugged in, you should hear the fan activate on the laser. And that's a sign that power is provided to the laser module. So the next thing that we need to go ahead and check is the PWM. So that's pulse width modulation. And that's basically the communication between the controller board and the laser. So what we need to check is to make sure that the laser is being activated and the signals are being sent to the laser from the controller board. So this is where you need to go ahead and make sure that you have your goggles on because the laser is about to be activated. And on the software, we're gonna go to the tooling option here. And on the laser, go ahead and select that. You'll see 5%, 10%, all the way up to 100%. We're gonna select the 5% just to make sure that the signal is being sent to our laser. Now with this module specifically, we have a button here that is going to lock the laser module. So regardless of the signal being sent, it's a safety precaution specific to this module. So we need to go ahead and select that button and you'll see that it's blinking. That means that it's active. So now selecting the 5%, you'll see that the laser activates. All right, now go ahead and turn that off. So you'll see that we have a little pin mark here left on the material from the laser. That's exactly what you want. So if you need to adjust the focus on your laser specific to your module that you're using or adjust the height, this is the time to do it. So this is fine tuning the laser. So I have mine set up perfectly. That's what you should see, a little tiny pin mark. And that means that your laser is configured properly and you're ready to start this job. Okay, so now that we have our laser configured, we know that it's functioning correctly. We're ready to start this job. We have our zero point established for our project start point. We have our G code uploaded into the control software. Everything looks good. So it's pretty much just a checklist to go over just to make sure that you're ready to start this project and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and go to the top side of the control software. You'll see run job and that's what we're going to select. So when we hit run job, the laser is going to activate through the G code. So let's go ahead and select run job. And I'm following the 3D view right here. And it will give you also a progress bar here at the bottom of the control software, which is really convenient. So you know when your job will be done. And let's watch our machine work.
Okay, so you can see that our job's complete. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just home the machine. That way we can access our material. And as you can see, this came out great. Okay, so that concludes the wiring and software portion of the Acro system. And as you can see, this machine came out great. All the wiring is nice and clean. We've got our black box hooked up, which was super easy to do. And man, it is a powerhouse. That project turned out great. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and make sure to join the Open Builds community.